Good evening, my name is Eric Reinhardt. I'm the Lake County State's Attorney. Yesterday, our office filed seven counts of felony reckless conduct charges against Robert Cremo Jr., the father of the alleged shooter in the Highland Park parade case. Everyone deserves to feel safe in, their, in every community. For too long, we have allowed gun violence to destroy lives and neighborhoods. We have allowed a cloud of fear to hang over every part of American life. No brother should fear dropping their younger sibling off at school. No aunt should fear taking her niece to a neighborhood barbecue. And no daughter should fear standing with her mother at a July 4th parade. As we all work to, together to address the root causes of crime, to hold shooters accountable for their actions in the courts, and to pass common sense gun safety legislation, we must also remember the long-standing principle that people bear responsibility for when they recklessly endanger others. These are the moral and legal foundations upon which these charges rest. Robert Cremo Jr., again, the father, took a reckless and unjustified risk when he decided on December 16, 2019, to sign his son's application for a firearm owner's ID, or FOID, card. At the time he signed the application, his son was 19 and could not, let me say that again, could not get a FOID card and because of that could not legally purchase a firearm without his father's assistance in that application process. Our system only allows 18, 19, and 20 year olds to acquire FOID cards and weapons if they have the authorization and participation of their parent or guardian. Parents and guardians are in the best position to decide whether their teenagers should have a weapon. They are the first line of defense. In this case, the system failed when Robert Cremo, Cremo Jr. sponsored his son. He knew what he knew, and he signed the form anyway. This was criminally reckless and a contributing cause to the bodily harm suffered by the victims on July 4th. Mr. Cremo Jr. will appear tomorrow before the, uh, in court uh, to have a bond set. He turned himself in this afternoon to the Highland Park Police Department. This prosecution is seven counts. It is brought in the names of the seven people who died on July 4th. Jacqueline, Nicholas, Catherine, Irina, Kevin, Stephen, and Eduardo deserve decisive action from this office as well as from legislators. For too long, we have allowed a vocal minority to drown out the will of the majority and to stall common sense legislation about, about gun safety. Shattered communities deserve better. Gun violence is a uniquely American devastation, but it is not destiny. It is a decision. And in my role of state's attorney of Lake County and as a father, I am once again asking legislators to make the decision that this will never happen again by banning assault weapons and large capacity magazines. I'm happy to answer a few questions, but I want to remind everybody this is a pending case. I will not be getting into the specifics uh, of the evidence. So Illinois State Police approved the application the dad sponsored. So what is the reckless conduct? Yep, that's a good question. It's because of the information that the father had about his own son. Um, if you look at the reckless conduct statute, uh, it describes it's any conduct by any means lawful or unlawful. So the conduct itself doesn't have to be by itself unlawful, right? It's not a DUI and a DUI is unlawful and that's also reckless conduct. Uh, it can be, of course, lawful, lawful actions. So based on what the father knew, the specific information that the father knew, he was reckless and it was reckless conduct. What was that specific info? I'm not gonna answer that. I'm not gonna get into the specifics of the evidence. What does he have to attest to the son's fitness to that? Great question. What, what does he have to Great question. He doesn't. Um, he doesn't. The, uh, the uh, FOID application, which I believe is changing, I would refer you to questions to the Illinois State Police about the specifics of the application, but the FOID application is something that he simply has to sign. He answers a few questions about himself. I was, very, I, was, I was very surprised by that. He's answering questions about himself 
not about the person receiving the FOID card. But the parents know what is going on with their teenagers. And so he knows what's going on, and it was reckless for him to participate in the FOID process in that way in this case. Mr. Brian, uh, is it possible that you could talk to the state's attorney, I mean, as the state's attorney, talk to the state rep and the state senator to probably get that law to uh, get that offer application? Yes, the great, great, yeah, great, great question. Um, my understanding is that there are some changes that have already happened internally in the Illinois State Police. Uh, my understanding is that there's also legislation, uh, proposed legislation, of course, uh, that will that will change uh, some parts of the FOID application process, as well as potentially uh, the ages of, of when you can uh, receive a FOID card. If he's convicted on all seven charges, what's the most what's the most punishment he could face? Each count of reckless conduct is a felony. Each count of reckless conduct faces up to three years in prison. Typically, reckless conduct charges uh, are concurrently, so it would be three years in prison. Yeah, great question. Um, I really don't want to get into, into that because there will be a bond hearing tomorrow, and we're going to have to actually argue that tomorrow. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to highlight our argument in that way. We need to make that argument tomorrow, and, and we'll let you know what we talk about tomorrow. But, but, I, but I think that's a, I think that's a fair question. He did surrender himself, which is an important part of the process, and um, he will be in court uh, before a judge tomorrow morning. When we've, a, we've asked the family or the family's attorneys about his involvement in the FOID process, they've always thrown it back at ISP. They've said. ISP should have seen or known that he could have been dangerous. Any response to that? ISP does not know more than someone about their son. IS, the government is not typically going to know more than a parent about what is going on with the, with the, with the minor, not the minor, but the 18, 19, or 20 year old. The class four felony is Probationable. Yes. Yes. Class four felony is probation up, up, and up to and including three years in prison. 